uh, last pre presentation is uh, by Dr. Ezra Teitelbaum uh, from Oregon Clinic. The title is uh, Clinical Outcome of Five Years After POEM, a Polar Endoscopic Myotomy for Treatment of Vasal Motility Disorder. Dr. Ezra Teitelbaum. Thank you very much, and uh, I'd like to thank SAGES for the opportunity to present our work this morning. These are our disclosures, uh, none of which are related to the current study. Achalasia is the most common primary esophageal motility disorder, resulting in symptoms of dysphagia, regurgitation, chest pain, and weight loss. Treatment modalities seek to palliate symptoms by ablating the lower esophageal sphincter, and for the past 20 years, two interventions have been considered standard of care, that is endoscopic pneumatic dilation or laparoscopic Heller myotomy. First performed by Professor Inouye in 2008, peroral endoscopic myotomy, or POEM, is a novel operation for the treatment of achalasia that creates a controlled surgical myotomy across the GE junction completely endoscopically. In terms of outcomes, both pneumatic dilation and laparoscopic Heller myotomy have excellent short-term results in terms of palliation of symptoms, but many patients go on to develop recurrent symptoms years after their procedure. For example, in the recent European achalasia trial that randomized patients to pneumatic dilation or laparoscopic Heller myotomy, at two years, there was an 86 and 90% success rate in the two groups. But by five years, this had decreased to 82% and 84%, indicating that some patients have a late recurrence of symptoms. POEM has dem demonstrated equivalent short-term outcomes and safety to these two uh, standard interventions. But because of the relatively recent introduction of the procedure, long-term outcomes are unknown. With this in mind, in this study, we sought to evaluate the symptomatic and physiologic outcomes for patients at our institution who are greater than five years removed for their, from their POEM treatment. Patients were our initial series, so representing the uh, initial learning curve at our series, and only those who are more than five years uh, postoperatively were included. Patients were assessed preoperatively using the Eckert symptom score, which grades symptoms on a scale of 0 to 12, with higher uh, scores indicating worse symptoms. Diagnosis was confirmed preoperatively using high-resolution manometry according to the Chicago classification system, and patients also underwent uh, timed esophagram and upper endoscopy. At six months postoperatively, patients were reassessed using the symptom score and underwent repeat manometry, esophagram, endoscopy, and additionally, 24-hour pH monitoring uh, to detect iatrogenic reflux as a result of the procedure. At two years, patients were reassessed uh, in terms of their symptoms, and at five years, again, uh, using the Eckert score. And at five years, with the current study, we encourage patients to return to undergo a repeat uh, upper endoscopy. There were 36 patients at our institution at the time of the study who were greater than five years removed from home. The majority of these were treated for achalasia, uh, but there were also several patients who were treated for uh, esophagogastric junction outflow obstruction with partially preserved peristalsis, as well as distal esophageal spasm. At the time of this study, current symptoms were, uh, scores were available for 29 patients at a median follow-up of five and a half years. Four patients were lost to follow-up, and three were deceased, uh, all due to causes unrelated to achalasia or POEM. Grouping the uh, symptomatic outcomes by diagnosis, there were 23 patients with achalasia, and these patients had a dramatic and significant decrease uh, in symptom scores from a preoperative value of 6.4 to a current five-year postoperative value of 1.7. Symptomatic success has been defined in prior trials, including the European achalasia trials, an Eckert score of three or less and 83% or 19 out of the 23 uh, patients with achalasia had a symptomatic success at current follow-up. None of the patients with achalasia required reintervention uh, for treatment of persistent or recurrent symptoms. In the five patients with EGJ outflow obstruction, uh, symptoms were also dramatically in, in improved at, uh, at five years, but two out of the five patients required uh, reintervention uh, for symptoms, and I'll, I'll touch on these patients uh, in a second. Uh, the patient with uh, distal esophageal spasm who had five-year follow-up uh, was a symptomatic success. The two patients who required uh, reintervention, I think, are instructive because they presented with a very uh, different uh, persistence or recurrence of symptoms. 
The first had persistent dysphagia fairly soon after uh, palm procedure, and on repeat manometry at six months had elevated uh, relaxation pressures uh, similar to her preoperative value. So we felt this is, represents a technical failure and incomplete uh, myotomy. She was treated with a laparoscopic Heller myotomy uh, with partial fundification uh, 11 months after the initial procedure. The second patient had uh, initial symptomatic relief, complete resolution of dysphagia. However, two years later, she developed recurrent chest pain and new cervical dysphagia, which was very different in character than the, uh, the more epigastric dysphagia she had uh, experienced preoperatively. On repeat manometry, she had a sustained ablation of the lower esophageal sphincter. However, she had uh, hypertensive contractions in the upper esophageal sphincter and proximal esophagus. So she was treated with an endoscopic cricomyotomy and a myotomy extension uh, through that spastic uh, segment. Both of these reinterventions were successes, uh, with the patients uh, having current Eckert scores of two or less. If we look at uh, symptoms over time, uh, with a plot of time on the x-axis and uh, Eckert score on the y-axis, with each patient's Eckert score as a uh, uh, light line and the bold line representing mean Eckert scores, we can see that at six months there was a dramatic improvement. This was sustained between six months and two years. However, between two years and five years, there was a slight but statistically significant worsening of symptoms uh, in the mean Eckert scores. And it should be noted that all four patients uh, with achalasia who had symptomatic failures, that is an Eckert score greater than three, developed those recurrent symptoms sometime between two and five years postoperatively. So these were late uh, uh, symptom recurrences rather than uh, persistent symptoms. Looking at physiology with uh, high resolution manometry and timed esophagram at six months postoperatively, we saw a dramatic improvement in both relaxation pressures and an improvement in uh, esophageal emptying on uh, esophagram. Patients in this initial cohort were not placed on routine anti-secretory therapy uh, postoperatively, but we evaluated them at six months with both a 24-hour pH study and an endoscopy. 38% of patients had uh, abnormal distal uh, esophageal acid exposure on pH study, and 39% had uh, esophagitis on endoscopy, but these were all uh, LA grade A or B. Patients with uh, evidence of uh, reflux at this point were advised to uh, begin anti-secretory therapy. And then we re-evaluated patients at five years with a repeat endoscopy. At five years, uh, only 13% of patients had esophagitis, again, LAA or B. Interestingly, two patients had developed new hiatal hernias uh, that were not present preoperatively. And one patient had developed a new uh, non-dysplastic Barrett's esophagus. Uh, one patient required uh, reintervention for uh, treatment of reflux. He was a 75-year-old with EGJ outflow obstruction who, in the interim between his uh, uh, POEM procedure and uh, current follow-up, developed a 4-centimeter uh, sliding uh, type 1 hiatal hernia. He was also the patient with non-dysplastic Barrett's, and he had persistent esophagitis and symptoms of reflux uh, despite medical therapy. Uh, so he was treated with a laparoscopic 2 fe fundification five years after his initial palm procedure, and he's currently doing well in terms of uh, symptoms of both uh, dysphagia and reflux. You can see his preoperative uh, esophagram and then uh, the intraoperative image on reoperation uh, showing a significant hiatal hernia. So in summary, in terms of treating achalasia, uh, patients on our series, 83% uh, of them had uh, symptomatic success at five years, and no patients uh, required uh, reintervention for persistent achalasia symptoms. Uh, and this is uh, consistent with uh, what's been demonstrated uh, in terms of the standard of care treatments in the uh, European achalasia trial. It should be noted that there was a slight worsening in symptoms between two and five year postoperatively, but I think we can uh, think of this as part of the natural progression of, of achalasia after uh, all interventions. The patients with EGJ outflow obstruction uh, two of the five required reintervention. I, I think we can sort of think of this as a, a new, newer diagnosis, a still evolving diagnosis in the Chicago classification, and we need more data regarding outcomes of these patients in general, uh, and, and those will help us define the optimal treatment uh, uh, algorithm for those patients. Mm -hmm.
terms of iatrogenic reflux, there were 38% of patients with a positive uh, pH study at six months. Uh, the majority of these were sec successfully treated with anti-secretory therapy. And we've now uh, altered our protocol to treat uh, all patients routinely after the procedure, keep them on uh, uh, either PPI or H2 blocker uh, until their routine uh, pH study at which we take them off the therapy, study them off therapy, and then whether that's positive or negative uh, dictates uh, whether they continue on therapy. Uh, it should be noted that one patient did go on to develop new uh, Barrett's esophagus, and the same patient required a uh, uh, operative intervention to treat uh, uh, refractory uh, reflux. In conclusion, uh, we can say that POEM uh, in our series provides an effective and durable symptom palliation for patients with achalasia at five years. However, uh, our results also show that patients, all patients, require a close long-term follow-up in terms of evaluating recurrent achalasia symptoms as well as reflux. And I think this holds true uh, after any uh, therapeutic intervention for achalasia. Thank you very much. Is there any questions or comment? Jeff yeah. Mark? Uh, Jeff Mark, Cleveland. Ezra, that's a great series. It's, you should be proud of that. One question for you. So you're blaming the disease for some of your problems at five years. Is there any chance this could be learning curve, thinking of how you did these procedures for the first couple of years in terms of the actual myotomy versus what you're doing now? And could you see in your statistics anything between years one to two versus two to three and, and beyond that might kind of be more corollary to, a, a, like I said, a learning curve rather than progression of disease? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, our group and others have, uh, have shown that there, there certainly is a discrete uh, learning curve that affects both uh, perioperative uh, outcomes in terms of time, mucosal injury, uh, and short-term symptomatic outcomes. Uh, so I think, you know, with experience, um, uh, likely our results and, and others will improve. Um, as to whether this will affect uh, that interval between two and five years when some patients develop uh, recurrent symptoms, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if, if that's a, really a result of the myotomy at all, and I think we need to study those patients further to try to drill down what the etiology of their recurrent symptoms is because I think uh, that's not really well understood. Other question? Uh, Dr. Teichelbaum, uh, in your series, uh, if the patient has uh, EGJ junction obstruction, uh, about two patients from five has a uh, problem. So do you, uh, you, uh, you said that you will make a guideline. So do you think uh, you do relative contraindication or something like that? How do you, how do you uh, think of the guideline for this uh, patient? Yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent question. I think that um, we need to understand more about these patients. I think, you know, the two failures in our um, series, one I think was a, a discrete technical failure. So I don't think that should preclude uh, POEM as a treatment for this uh, disease. And then, as you saw, the other patient had a, a sort of strange presentation where she developed this uh, cervical dysphagia and uh, hyperconstrictility of the upper esophageal sphincter. So I think, again, not really an indictment of POEM itself. Um, so I think these patients are uh, unique, and um, they're probably heterogeneous within that subgroup, and uh, we need to understand better how to treat them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.